بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The most important and useful advices are those of Allah Almighty and then the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And today we'll speak about some of the advices of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they are many. Basically they are dealing with two main topics. Your relationship with the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your relationship with the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to deal with the creator and the creation. How to deal with the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in two regards. In regard to your worship to him, and in regard when you do a mistake or sins and wrongdoing. In both situations. In general, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa summarized it. He said, have taqwa towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make a shield between you and between the punishment and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you shield yourself from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there any shield to stand between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The concept is avoid angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoid disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Basically, how you do that? Simply, do what he required you to do, what he ordered you to do. Avoid what he ordered you to avoid. And that's it. This is taqwa. Now, uh, this, uh, the, the order of the Messenger Sallallahu towards taqwa is repeated throughout towards many of the Sahaba who ask him for advice. However, we are human beings. And even if you are one of the pious people and righteous people, and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you avoid angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are still a human being, you will still sin and do wrongdoing. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, all sons of Adam are sinners. All of them. But the best among those who sin are those who repent. So what is the second advice? If you sin, if you make a mistake, then make a repentance. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa advised one of the Sahaba radiallahu anh, and whenever you make any sin, then make in it a tawbah, a repentance. See how careful the wording of the Messenger Sallallahu He didn't say, then make after it or afterwards. He said, in it. Because usually the difference between somebody who fears Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and who is pious and somebody who is not, is the one who fears Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he makes a mistake, even before finishing, even while he is doing it, he will remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and turn back. So the idea is keep this point in your mind all the time. The second that is linked with it is be shy from sinning in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The advice of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to one of the Sahaba, he says, feel shy from sinning in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like you feel shy from sinning in front of one of the righteous people within your community. Usually, even sinners, they feel ashamed and shy to sin in front of people, and especially in front of righteous people. So here the Messenger وسلم, said, keep in your mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you all the time. So do not, when you are alone, do not run and do sins and wrongdoings, God forbid. In the order of the Messenger وسلم, regarding the concept of taqwa, we have two wordings. The first one, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. Wherever you are, very strange. But there is a reason behind it. The reason is that some people sometimes think that taqwa is required only in the masjid, for example. Or only within your local community. But if you travel far away, if you go on a vacation, if you are a, a tourist, then taqwa is not required anymore. So that is why the Messenger of is saying, you need to keep this concept of taqwa wherever you are. So this is the first part. Whether you are among righteous people or whether you are among sinners, God forbid. You need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. The second part, the Messenger of Allah Sallam said, have taqwa, be righteous and pious, whether you are, whether it is in public or in secret. 
whether you are in front of people or whether you are alone and there is nobody. So that is the concept of taqwa. The second part from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is if you sin and do a mistake and repent, then you need to increase good deeds. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you sin, then follow the sin by a good deed so that it will wipe it away. Subhan. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran. Verily, the good deeds wipe away the bad deeds. So if you sin, make repentance and increase the good deeds so that it will cover up for that. To make up for your mistake. The part that is linked with people, the Messenger وسلم, summarized it with a beautiful phrase. He said, deal with people with high morals and good etiquettes. That's and the surprise here is that the Messiah وسلم, generalized the term people. He didn't say deal with Muslims, with your brothers, with the believers, with righteous people. He said with people. Deal with people with good etiquettes and good morals, high morals. خالق الناس بخلق حسن. Now, uh, there are many advices of the Messenger of Allah about specific groups of people. For example, about the parents, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered this in the Holy Quran. Live with them on good grounds and good dealings. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, advice, he said to Abu Budar radiallahu anhu, he said, and obey your parents. Obey your parents. Means as long as they are not ordering you to do a sin or wrongdoings or an injustice or something that is harmful to you or to others. If it is any part of that, then it is not, uh, you should not follow them. But if it is anything else, you have to follow them. Clear? The second thing is to reach out for the relatives. Abu Dhar he said that my beloved, the Messenger وسلم, my beloved, the Messenger وسلم, advised me to keep connection with my relatives even if they turn away from me. Remember, keeping a relation in Islam, something that is sometimes misunderstood by people. And they treat each other on common grounds. If they visit me, I visit them. If they send me gifts, I have to send them gifts. If they are good to me, I have to be good to them. And they think that they are keeping a relation in this way. That is not keeping relations. This is payment of favors or exchange of favors. Keeping a relation, this is the explanation of the Messenger Wasallam. He said the one who keeps a relation is not the one who pays back. But the one that when the relation is severed by them, he connects it. They are turning away, but you keep connection. One of the Sahaba of the line came to the Messenger Wasallam. He said, complaining about his relatives. And he said, oh Messenger of Allah, I keep connecting their relation with them and they keep on severing it and turning it away from me. I say good things about them and they say bad things about me. I send them gifts and reach out for them and they never do that. The Messenger وسلم, advised him to continue doing what he does. He didn't say that's it, there is no need, you have done your duty. No, this is, this is your duty. Why? Because you are dealing with them in a kind manner, in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the idea is you are following the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? So the, that is why for a righteous person who is keeping a relation based on the orders of Allah Almighty, he will never change, whether they are good or bad to him, because he is dealing with Allah Almighty in their regards. He's not dealing with them. So he will continue. While a person who is doing it for worldly gains, the moment something bad happens, some misunderstandings or uh, some rivalries and problems within the families, and he stops the relations. Get forbid. That is not the concept. And then after that, reaching out to women and uh, good treatments to them. This was the advice repeated in the Holy Quran. Allah Almighty said, and live with them on good ground. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advises a beautiful advice. He says, advise one another to treat women well. Advise one another to treat women with goodness. 
So the advice here, advice one another. Why this wording and why here? SubhanAllah, there is a reason and wisdom behind it. You see, sometimes a person is not aware. He's new to marriage life, for example, or to dealing with women and so on. And during the speech or talking with somebody else, the other person advised him, you know, you need to be careful. From the beginning, you have to set rules, you have to set limits, you have to show them the red eyes, and you have to show them uh, your toughness, otherwise they will overpower you, they will uh, uh, overcome you, and so on. That is the exact opposite of the advice of the Messenger Sallallahu When somebody seeks your advice regarding women, what should you say? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you should advise him to treat them with goodness and will. That is the advice of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi So usually they are the weaker part in the relation. So that is why you have to be careful. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I highly forbid, severely forbid the right of two weeks part in the society. Women and orphans. That is why it is something that is, that is why the Messenger of Islam said, advise one another. Whenever anybody, for example, you, you, you hear your friend that he's going to do something bad or he wants to leave the family or disregard them or does not give them their right, it is your duty to advise him to do good. It's your duty to advise him to do good as the Messenger of Islam told us. Uh, the next part is actually goodness to the uh, neighbors. And this is repeated in the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to honor the neighbor and respect him and reach out uh, for him. This is also the advice of Jibreel alayhi uh, salam. The Messenger of Allah said, say, Jibreel, peace be upon him, continued to advise me for the rights of the neighbor until I thought that he was giving, going to give him part of the inheritance. He's going to inherit me. So much so, he kept on repeatedly advising me to treat and honor and reach out to the neighbor until I thought that he will share part of the inheritance. And in practice, the Messenger وسلم, also advised Abu Dhar and other Sahaba that if you uh, cook anything, then send some part of it to your neighbor. Do not be little any favor, the Messenger of Allah is speaking to women, do not be little any favor that one of you does to her neighbors. No matter how little or insignificant it might be, sin. The, the connection between neighbors is something that is uh, the advice of the Messenger of Allah. The other parts of the advice is avoiding harming people, whether it is by speech or by action. One of the Sahaba came to the Messenger of Allah asking him for advice. So the Messenger of Allah asked him, can you control your tongue? <coughs> so the man was surprised. He says, who am I if I cannot even control my own tongue? Obviously I can. The Messenger Sallallahu said, and then can you control your hand? He said, what I will be if I will not be able to control my own hand? The Messenger Sallallahu said to him, then do not say anything except if it is good and do not reach out with your hand to anything except with goodness. So whenever you are speaking, either say goodness or control your tongue. This is the, <laughs> this is the test. Can you control it? That is. And the same with your action. Whether it, you are dealing with someone that you know or somebody you do not know, whether you are angry or not, and so on. Uh, this was also the advice of the Messenger وسلم, to some of the Sahaba and other Sahabi says, never insult anyone. Never insult anyone. And do not be little, any kind of goodness. So avoid any type of harm and never be little, any kind of goodness. Even if just meeting someone with a cheerful face. Let me know, even that, do it. Do not think that this is something that is insignificant. This is something important in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even things as little as that, they are important as per the advice of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa We'll conclude with uh, some of the comprehensive advices of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa One of them was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anh. He said the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, who wants to take advices from me? on condition that he will practice them 
or he will teach them to someone who will practice them. Abu Hurairah said, I said, I will do, O Messenger of Allah. This is, now this is a contract between you and the Messenger of Allah, an oath. It's something that is serious and you need to be careful about it. Abu Hurairah was reading, he says, I do, O Messenger of Allah. He said, then he took my hand and he counted five. He counted five, five advices. The first one, the Messenger of Allah Sallam, said, <coughs> This one, the first one, something that many Muslims misunderstand. Who is the most worshipping person among Muslims? How to be the most worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So if you ask Muslims, usually they will tell you all kind of answers. You need to increase salah and ibadah and dua and istighfar and so on. And all of these are great things for sure. But the Messenger of Allah said something else. He says, to be truly the most worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to avoid what is haram. And that's it. Yes? So even if you are doing, mashallah, thousands of ibadahs every day, but you are eating the right of people, or belittling them, or doing something that is haram, all of these uh, do not compare for that. Do not make up for it. So to be, the Messenger of Allah said, be aware of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade and you will be the most worshipping among people. The best worshipper, the most worshipping. And be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you and you will be the wealthiest among people. The concept of wealth is not numbers. The concept of wealth is in the heart. If you think that you are in need of something, then you are not wealthy. You are poor. You are in need. Even if you have lots of things. If you still think that you still need something, then you are not wealthy. But if you think that you have enough, you have everything, you are wealthy. So that is the concept. Something, something of a mentality. And it's true. In real life, this is how it works. You find people who are extremely wealthy and if you ask him, he says, I haven't done enough and I still I have lots of things and I need to do and I don't have time to enjoy my life or to play and so on. Even with his own families, does not have time for himself or for his families or for his health sometimes or the people around him. So what type of wealth is that? It's just numbers. Doesn't make sense. The Messenger Sallallahu says, be content with what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala provided you and you will be the wealthiest among people and be kind to your neighbor and you will be a believer and love for people what you love for yourself and you will be a Muslim you will be a Muslim and do not laugh a lot because verily too much laughter kills the heart the person will not be serious in life if he follows laughter all the time and comedies and joking uh, that becomes his lifestyle he will not be serious about his future or his plans or her, his visions so those are five of the greatest advices as you see in relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relationship with people around you and some of your own characteristics the uh, other uh, advices of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said there are three things that will protect you Three things that will save you in the hereafter. The Messenger Sallallahu said, Fearing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in public and in secret. First one. And be just, justice, whether you are happy or angry. Whether you are pleased or angry. Now some people, everybody, it is very easy to be just and to do justice when something is in your favor when you are happy, when you are satisfied. Isn't it? But when the ruling is against you, when it's the exact opposite, when you are upset, when you are angry, that is when the real measurement comes. The Messenger Sallallahu said, you need to be just and deal with people justly, whether you are angry or whether you are uh, pleased. And the third one, the Messenger Sallallahu said, and being balanced in spending, whether you are wealthy or poor whether you are wealthy means overspending and wasting and showing off and so on squandering wealth this is something that is not a good thing 
And whether you are poor means do not be stingy and, and, and afraid to spend just because you are poor. So you need to have that middle. And the concept of balance and moderation in Islam is something that is very important. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam said, and there are three things that are, God forbid, destroyers. They are going to destroy you. Means in the hereafter and also in this world. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam said, the first one, a whim, whims and desires that are followed. Somebody might have some whims and desires sometimes, but he does not follow them. He stops himself. He controls himself. Right? Whether it is in saying or doing or harming someone or taking revenge, whatever it might be, something that he wants to do, but it's not a good thing to do. So there are people who control themselves and people who follow that. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam say, the thing that will destroy you if you follow your whims and desires. Whatever you wish, whatever you hope for, even if it is wrong, even if it is an injustice, you are going to do it, God forbid, this is something that is going to destroy. Second thing, stinginess that is followed. An advice not to spend, to be stingy and selfish. If you follow that, God forbid, this is something, if you obey these, this is something that will destroy you. The example, sometimes you want to spend, for example, to send to your parents or to your relatives. And the wife comes and says, no, you cannot send, this is too much. We have children, they have the universities, they have future, we haven't bought a house, we haven't uh, so and so and so forth. And this, if you follow it and stop spending, God forbid, the Messenger of Allah say, this is something wrong, you need to be careful. So whatever wrong advice that you might be getting from people around you, not to spend. The other way around. The wife wants to send to her family and so on and says, and the husband is saying, how come you are working here during our time? You are not doing the, 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 the chores of the house and the duties and you still want to send the money to them and so on. What have they done for you? All of these, the Messenger of Allah, the advice is of stinginess. If you follow them, if you obey them, God forbid this is something that is dangerous. Do what is right. Always do what is right. And the last one, the Messenger of Allah Wasallam said, and being proud about yourself. Being a show off. Being arrogant. Thinking that you are better than people. This is something that is going to destroy. The, the way this one destroys, by the way, in two things. The first one, it will stop you from progressing. The moment you say, I am and I have done, you are talking about what you have done. So you will not be doing any money or very little. You will stop progressing. And the second one is that you will lose people around you. You will not be a team player. So people will not like to be part of your team or support you with your uh, visions uh, and work. Uh, last uh, uh, advice of the Messenger of Allah that we are going to speak about concerning the nawafil. He advised us to increase the nawafil. Abu Huraira he says, My beloved, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ordered me with three things that I will never leave as long as I live until I die. He advised me to fast three days every month. And he advised me to pray the Duha prayer. And he advised me to pray the Witter before I sleep. So those are the three most important out of all the nawafil to pay attention to. There are others, but this was the advice given by the Messenger Sallallahu in this occasion to uh, Abu Huraira As uh, we are speaking about fasting, we are approaching a day that is extremely important to fast. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi advised us to fast this, which is the day of Arafah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I count with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He will forgive and remove the sins of two years for fasting the day of Arafah. The last year and the coming year. Now the day of Arafah is approaching us. It will be on Monday, inshallah. So this is a great opportunity that you should never miss, no matter what. Something that is very important that a person should pay attention to. So uh, we need to advise one another of the advices of the Messenger Wasallam. Remind ourselves and remind one another of them and practice them and teach them to those who will practice them. Even if you are not going to do some of them, 
you still advise people to do it because maybe there are other people who are eager to do when they learn that this is the advice of the messenger وسلم, they will do it uh, inshallah we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who follow the advice of the messenger وسلم, and make us the companions of the messenger وسلم, in the hereafter ameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in